what have I enjoyed about appearing at the Edinburgh Book Festival? Probably the, the main thing was being able to spend time with my friend Joe Sacco, who's uh, one of the artists, cartoonists, graphic novelists whom I admire most in the world. He's uh, sort of the moral center of our, of our humble profession, I think, in a lot of ways. He puts himself in situations and places that nobody else that I know involved in comics would even think of going to, let alone dare themselves in. And he's explored the extremes of, of human emotion and, uh, that's a good word, the seagulls are distracting me. Yeah, um, violence, I guess, emotional violence, physical violence, power, powerlessness greater than anybody else, I think, involved in, in comics. Beginning with Art Spiegelman, I think, you know, I, I think we've all taken a, uh, uh, art's in a lot of ways really our spiritual father, I don't, and we've all kind of gone in different directions from what art has done, so and Joe's taken it one way, and myself and other artists have done other things. But. Also, it's nice to be in Edinburgh. I've always wanted to be here. My stepfather is, is Scottish. He was born here. Heard a lot about it growing up, so I wanted to come see what it's like. It's very beautiful. Everybody's extraordinarily kind, generous, thoughtful. The town is very clean. Seems to be a real sense of civic responsibility here, which seems to be quickly eroding in my country, so it's nice to be somewhere where that's uh, part of the general charter. So There's more cartoonists now doing serious work more than ever before, I think, so I'm glad to see that, especially this year even. There's some amazing books that have been published from Ben Catcher's new book and Ruto Modan and just a number of really serious, wonderful works that have come out. So it makes me proud to be a cartoonist and graphic novelist. So. It's still all, there's still comic shops, there's still, you know, I, it, there's still superhero books being published. And, I mean, as everybody can see, they're the, they're the main core of what makes up the American film industry now, that, that line between film and comics and, and uh, I guess, for lack of a, another word, the, the fiction that used to be considered juvenile and is now considered part of the mainstream culture is blurred so much uh, that I still think that people think of comics as a genre, which it is not. It is a language, and it's a language that can express any any human emotion, I think. Uh, it's taken a while for we cartoonists to figure out ways of doing it in a way that isn't uh, too uh, uh, cheesy, I guess. But um, I, I think Definitely, they seem to be much more accepted, again, through uh, appearing in magazines like The New Yorker and The New York Times, again, due to the efforts of Art Spiegelman and his wife, Francoise Mouly, who works there as the art editor, and David Remnick, who's very amenable to running comics as fiction. So uh, then again, everybody's just, you know, people who used to read them when they were young are now getting older, just like I am. So it's, it's not like I'm convincing a bunch of old professors that comics are actually a valid art form. So I think people are, a lot of people who are teaching comics now were, were in college 10 years ago reading comics. So it's just, it's, it's culture changes. It's, it's what happens. So. I think it's a very, very slow form. It takes a long time to draw a single page. So you have a lot of time to think about what to put in it. Also, there's, if you're lucky, you're doing it in complete isolation, which can allow you to think about something to such a degree of depth that you might put something on the page that you might not otherwise do if you were doing it quickly, I think. So, um, and beyond that, you have all of the tools of graphic art at your disposal, from text to pictures to color to pattern, all everything, typography. Potentially, you could talk about anything, and you should be able to talk about anything, especially because you're the, as a cartoonist, one is sitting at a table by oneself. Nobody's telling you what to do. You don't you need expensive tools. It's not like making a film. It's not like trying to raise money for a large art project or something. It's just somebody sitting at a table with a pen and a piece of paper. So, uh, I, I sit down. I would, well, basically, I uh, once I take my daughter to school, I come back and answer a couple of emails and then sit down at my drawing table and try desperately to stay sitting there for as long as possible without getting distracted by other things. But uh, I, I might take notes here and there about a strip or a page that I'm working on, but mostly it's just sitting at a, at a table in front of a blank sheet of Bristol board with a pencil in my hand. And the second I draw something on the page, whatever I had in mind is immediately changed by what I look at. So it's, it's very much affected by 
what I see and what I'm thinking. It's a constant sort of back and forth. And when I see something that I didn't necessarily expect on the page, it'll call up a memory that maybe wasn't so clear, and that'll affect the flow of the story and the structure of the story itself. So some of the things that surprise me the most when I'm working happen while I'm, I'm working. So, uh, I mean, working is still thinking. It's, it's not like you have to think and then work, or work and then think. They're the same thing. And what's the, why would you not think or plan? It's, even if you're thumbnailing or, or writing a script, you're still working from zero and working as you go. So I think one of the advantages of comics is that it takes so long and takes such intense concentration that it's to your advantage to have that time to think about something in depth and to think about it from all angles. So getting to know Art and Francoise and being in Raw Magazine changed. I mean, I've been reading their work ever since I was in high school. and. Uh, their, their sense of how comics could be an expressive medium and how to put together a book and how a book can reflect the content of a story was, it's everything to me. That it changed my thinking about comics entirely. It's probably what made me a cartoonist, I think. It made me realize that, yeah, I could, I could actually grow up and still be a cartoonist. And not, I mean, that, that underground generation, including Robert Crumb, certainly, who's been a profound influence on everybody, not only his own generation, but the generation that followed. Kim Deitch certainly, I think, is one of the greatest fiction writers in comics, so they all sort of laid the groundwork, I guess. Music is very important. As music is the foundation of comics, I think. It's the, it's the engine that runs underneath everything. Essentially, you're composing on the page uh, it, with images, even not necessarily with words. There's still an order and a rhythm to the page as you read it, so it's... Uh, it's definitely a musical composition.